Hey guys, Dustin Ellerman here, and today we're talking about setting up your rifle for hunting season and then maintaining it throughout so that you have a successful hunt. Now the first thing I like to do before I even get to the shooting range is get my hunting rifle out and check it for, uh, the, make sure it's tight, just check the overall condition. Of course you can have a gunsmith do this, uh, but I also like to do it um, at home when I have a torque wrench. You check up the manufacturer's specifications, make sure your mounts, your rings, the stock, that everything's good, tight and snug and ready to go. Now the next thing you want to do is uh, is double check your bore. Make this is a good time to clean it. Give a good thorough cleaning because after we shoot it and check our zero at the range, we don't want to clean it again because you'll have a fouling shot for that first round after you clean the gun, and you don't want your first shot to be off during hunting season. Now, if you're one of those guys that really has to just make sure that hey, they're you're clean all the way to, all the time, uh, check out these Otis kits. These Otis kits have a pull-through cleaning cable, and so we take the cable and we can attach a bore brush or even uh, the, the patches and the, and the oil and you can run this through from the breech to the muzzle and, and, and clean it at the range and have a nice compact package. I also like to keep this in my hunting bag in case, you no, know, you know, accident happens, the you know, gun falls off the four-wheeler, muzzle down into the mud and then you don't want to shoot the mud, you don't want to shoot mud out of your gun. It can blow up on you. Make sure you don't have a bore obstruction and so you can check it and you can use a kit like this to shove that out and clean it so you don't ruin your hunt over some little tragedy like that. Now once you get to the range, get you a good solid rest. I picked up this Caldwell rest at Gander Mountain the other day and it's slick. Now we always had our wood homemade ones that we were using at Marksman Camp, but those are 75 yards out there and uh, I wanted one for myself back here. Now this has a 360 degree swivel, so I'm thinking I set this up in the middle of a prairie dog town and just, you know, go to town. But it's great when you have a, like a right-handed or a left-handed shooter, you can't see the stool, but it's just spinning all around here and, uh, and it'll give us a good solid rest when we get started. Once, once we're ready to go, I have these champion shooting bags up here uh, that I also picked up at Gander because they're like, uh, it's like sandbag on steroids. It's four separate bags right here and you can put it in different configurations and roll it to different heights. But what I was after it was what it was intended for and designed for. We put the, uh, the, the rifle here right in this leather groove and it's going to give us a good solid rest. It's going to have um, a consistent pattern as as you shoot the rifle just slides straight back kind of like those bench rest shooter guys do and then it will also um, uh, grip the rifle a little and reduce recoil so you can't complain there so um, we're gonna go ahead and put a few rounds down range now what else else I recommend is make sure that you have a good uh, target what I have here is this one uh, has has one inch grids and then it's a shoot you know, you know you'll see where you shoot as well so uh, we don't have to get a spotting scope out for just a few rounds to confirm our zero. And then we have the gr one inch grids so that if you have your optic, you can go ahead and just follow those, follow those patterns and get on. Now you notice I, I took my sling off before I shoot because I don't want the sling to interfere with the sandbags. And also that's how I hunt. Um, I, I usually hunt in a blind and first thing I do is take my sling off so it's not going to wiggle around and, and tap anything while we're out there. So of course eyes and ears first. I always recommend eye and ear protection while you're hunting. A lot of times, of course, I hunt with a suppressor, but I do bring my eye protection and I try never to fire a gun without eye protection because just stuff can happen. You know, we talked about a bore obstruction earlier. If you got one in there, your gun's going to go kabooey and uh, you're going to catch shrapnel and you don't want, you don't want to go blind. Stuff like that. I know that even, um, well, they talked about uh, African hunting and the safaris and such. Uh, they will always plug their barrels at night because they'll have mud daubers that'll come and make a nest in their barrel. And gosh, that's a terrible idea because you know that'll blow up. Also, well, I haven't done this, but I read about it. And so I, I have some right here. I just rolled up some four or five inch water balloons that we use at Marksman Camp. And what we can do is if we're really worried about a bore obstruction or even moisture, because I've heard of guys shooting, this is when long range shooting comes in to play when you're hunting at four or five hundred yards which is uh, out of a lot of people's wheelhouse but the moisture in their barrel can be like a fouling shot after you cleaned and so you take a take a balloon and and just have it rolled up and just roll it over your barrel if you're hunting in wet conditions as well and it also shouldn't throw your shot off much so since we have it we'll go ahead and uh, see if it throws our shot off when we do it so we'll get it on there good and snug um, also 
use the same ammo that you're gonna hunt with to make sure that you zero your rifle. I know some of you guys, you're like me, and uh, you like to save money, and you're gonna try to shoot the cheap stuff to check your rifle zero and then put a completely different ammo in it when you're hunting. Bad idea. Even if it's the same grainage, it can be completely different and have a different point of impact. So you don't wanna do that. So we're gonna go ahead and load up, test out our little um, a muzzle block up there and see what we can do. All right, so also, I didn't t tell you about it, but the rear sandbag, that's very important as well. Uh, now, of course, when you're hunting, you may not have that, but it's a great thing to take the most of the human element out of it so that you can test your rifle's capabilities, and then later, you can train on your own marksmanship skills for hunting. Okay, this is gonna be interesting with Nosler right there. Uh, I don't shoot unsuppressed much. We're gonna see what she does. It's gonna be loud, big pig. All right, there we go. Fluff that a little bit. All right. <laughs> she hardly moved. <laughs> oh, now she's now she's like uh, loud. You're okay. Yeah, shake it off. Shake it off. All right. Point of impact looked the same as when I was shooting earlier. So, although we blew our balloon off, let's try it again. We're still, let me see. This is why I like having the same tar uh, target there with me. First shot was right here, second shot was right there. So we're still one MOA. It looked a little wider through the distance of my scope, but now that I look at the target up close, it's fine. All right, so we're looking good. Um, so after that, like I said, you want to clean now, now's your chance to clean it out, and then shoot a round or two through it so that you know you don't have a fouling shot later on coming down the line. Um, so after that, I would recommend this is your marksmanship training time. If you shoot in a different type of position when you hunt, you need to check that position now. Like I may have said earlier, I like uh, shooting, uh, we shoot out of blinds a lot in Texas, and so your front blind rest is going to be roughly like a sandbag, not that nice, but but we're resting on the same place. You never want to rest on your barrel. That will throw your shot off. I'll try to link to an article I wrote a few months ago where I did some uh, comparison tests on resting on the end of the barrel versus, of course, resting where you're supposed to on the free-floated arm. And uh, it, it, uh, let's just say 16 inches at 50 yards. Uh, you can look it up from there. So if we sh shoot with from a sling, you want to check that because uh, shooting from that sling and that sling tension on that forend can even drift your shot off. Um, it, I know with my kids, we use a lot of these shooting sticks because, well, the rifles are kind of heavy for them, but then you always want to be as uh, safe and ethical of a hunter as you can. So if you're going to use like these Primo's trigger sticks, uh, it, uh, check your zero with this because you might be putting in, inadvertently putting different tensions and pressures on. So test yourself at the range and, and do some marksmanship training. Um, Hi, big pig. Yeah, uh, hunting would be easier with with Stella. You just whistle and she comes on over. <laughs> Let's see. Hey, Stella. I mean, Stella. Stella is the old pig. This is Nasser. Nasser, <whistles> come here. Come here. She's like, that gun didn't have a suppressor. She's not coming today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, when you're also hunting, don't beat yourself up if you're not shooting one MOA like they do in those hunting and gun magazines. Uh, think of it in a practical uh, matter. You know, of course, do test different types of ammos out. Your rifle may not like those, but with my kids, you know, I'm just trying to get them within that six inch kill zone of a white tailed deer. And so if they've got it, then we're good. If they can only do it at a certain distance, then we keep it at that distance to have a safe and ethical hunt. Also, never overlook the importance of dry fire training. Uh, that's what usually what I do before I load up live at a range, because dry fire training is free and it's not going to break most all your guns are going to be fine with some dry fire training and so just just practice that learning where your trigger your trigger sear and break is and and then also if you when you get in the hunting blind you know double check it and just refresh your memory of how that trigger works and that's what I also do for my kids is I, I when we first get in the blind I'm like all right do a few clicks uh, you happy with it okay now we're gonna be quiet and wait for the deer to come in so y'all have a safe and fun hunt when you're out there do not forget the uh, the firearm safety rules treat every gun like it's loaded keep it pointed in a safe direction your finger off of that trigger and then keep it unloaded when uh when when you don't need it all right so y'all have a safe and fun season y'all go rise kill and eat <laughs>